Talk Real Estate with Sharon McNamara, sponsored by Boston Connect Real Estate Services. I'm your host, Sharon McNamara, and you are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. Let me share a little bit about my background before we get started. I am the broker owner of Boston Connect Real Estate, a boutique firm that is home to over 30 real estate sales and marketing agents who service home buyers and home sellers throughout Boston, the South Shore, the South Coast, and Cape Cod. Our firm takes pride in assisting our clients in the next chapter of their lives by taking a holistic approach to their real estate endeavors. We believe that every move should be a moving experience. Every week, my co-host Melissa Wallace and I will provide you with my team's unique marketing approach to selling homes and share with you our expertise in navigating the home buying process. We value the experience of our agents at Boston Connect Real Estate so much that not only will you hear my perspective on real estate topics, occasionally you will hear the expert thoughts and opinions of our experienced agents at Boston Connect Real Estate. Be a part of our roundtable. If you have any questions during the show, please call 781-837-4900. We'd love to talk real estate. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and wherever you'd like to listen to podcasts at Talk Real Estate Roundtable. If you would like a one-on-one consultation with me and my team to discuss your real estate needs, you can connect with me at bostonconnect.com or 781-826-8000. Now sit back, relax, take good notes, and let's talk real estate. And hello to all my South Shore neighbors. You are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. My name is Melissa Wallace, and I am joined by two very special guests tonight. Two of probably my favorite people in the industry, in their industry, of course. What? what? Wow. Say what? <laughs> um, and I actually feel like we've been like, I know that you left for a little while, but you guys were here earlier. So we had lunch together. It's now, been a whole day. Now we're doing a show together. We're just the three best friends that anyone's ever had, right? <laughs> we should start singing now, I think. <laughs> I think, I, yeah, we are going to turn tonight's show into a karaoke uh, oh, show. Surprise. So I think this buckle up, everybody. Numbers. Yeah. We should, we should help. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So Sharon and Mary are actually um, away at a work retreat. Um, so they are not joining me tonight. But I am joined, again, by two very special people in this industry. Um, Jasmine Glasgow. Yes. I got it. You got it. I, I know. And you know what? I say it all the time, too. But, like, when you're in my presence, I'm like, oh, Everyone you make me all nervous. Everyone immediately, like, it's like, Jasmine <laughs> Glasgow, when, whenever I'm Jasmine. in Jasmine. <laughs> well, I even even said Jasmine before you even came on whatever and we also have Jorge Jorge yeah <laughs> we have George Post you guys are from Maritime Mortgage um, I'm gonna get us completely set up on Facebook but I do want to give you guys an opportunity to introduce yourselves to all of our listeners I know you've been on the show before and you are an avid listener I hope you're an avid listener as well George indeed okay good um, but you, you guys actually have space. done you've you've <laughs> taken over our show before a couple months ago you guys did the show um, we did. Yeah, and Sharon and I are like, we're going to a meeting. It was a town meeting, too, in Pembroke. We're going to a town meeting. You guys just do the show, yeah, okay? Yeah, guys, be careful if they invite you over for pizza. You <laughs> might end up hosting a radio yeah. show. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It, I, I find it pretty fun. I mean, yeah, the 8 a.m. on Saturdays have been a little... Uh, tiresome for me yeah. so far but you know it kick, it kicks but my day great. off they're really great i love the 8 yeah. a.m spot because i, I feel know like everyone's started like kind of get comfortable yeah. and it's, it's like 6 30 a.m to like 8 a.m i don't love mm. and then from 8 on i'm like okay my day started you right. know i've been getting my nails done and then i go to work in the afternoon and i'm like all right fine my day I'm, I'm not you know laying in bed waiting for the show at 10 but um but yeah, so you guys have done the show before, but why don't you reintroduce yourselves to all of our listeners, where you're from, um, what you do, yeah. areas you service, all that fun stuff. No, absolutely. So first, uh, Maritime Mortgage Corp. We have some licensing to get out there. We are NMLS number 2708. My NMLS is MLO 16226. Wow. So if you ever want to go on Consumer Access and look us up and see, we've had no complaints, you can do it there. Uh, so the legal stuff out of the way, my name is Jasmine Glasgow. I am broker co-owner of Maritime Mortgage. Woohoo! Yes, it is official. It's Woo-hoo! public. Yes, I've been real quiet about it. Um, <laughs> we're not going to be quiet about it anymore. But we're not quiet about it anymore. No, I'm an owner of Maritime Mortgage, me and Colin Brennan. I'm also team lead of uh, Team Maritime, and so that's uh, George and I. We have some other awesome people on our crew, but mm-hmm. George is my right-hand man. Uh, so George Post, 
Tell them, tell them who you are. Uh, an, an easier last name to pronounce, which is great. It's like, come on, like, it's like the post office? Yeah. Like, it's hard to It's screw the up. first half of the post office. Yes. Uh, but, but my license number is 169-3795, so get that out of the way. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, a part of the, the Team Maritime team and Maritime Mortgage as a whole. And, uh, yeah, we're just so thrilled to be here and be a part of Thank you for bringing us on. Yeah. But just in the intro, talking about families journeys and that's yeah. really why we wake up every morning is to help that family and individuals as yeah. well um and it is such a journey so we are so thankful to be brought on here yeah it, and it is we're a journey. mass new hampshire yeah. maine uh rhode island and florida and people was like well, you guys guys skipped a lot of states but we only lend where we where we play where we live yeah. and where yeah. we really know the communities like if i can't recommend a good donut shop to you like if i even <laughs> like should i even be in the should area? i even be in the area <laughs> i need to know where the best test. donut is yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, discovered some amazing donuts in Western Mass uh, just recently, too. So I'll, I'll post that on my Facebook. But yeah. let's get into this. I know. Uh, and you mentioned uh, the journey and the journey that we're sort of all on together. Um, everybody who listens, everybody who's in my life knows that I am pre-approved by you guys. And I do CC you on every offer I submit. <laughs> Uh, which we love. Which, yeah. And, but I, uh, yeah, I got the, pr- the approval from you, though. Yes. Like, okay, always, you know, CC me on it, CC me on it, you know. And I am picking up the phone and being like, okay, can I do this? Every single time. And we'll get into sort of like the journey of, you know, writing an offer and being in contact with your, um, with your loan officer or team. Um, but, yeah, I always say on the show, like, how important your roles are because, I, as a buyer, don't know where I am until, unless you guys are telling me, you know, like, you are there. And I talk about our meeting all the time, because I'm like, I walked into Jasmine's office, like, being like, oh my gosh, she's going to make fun of me. Like, oh, she's going to be like, you, why did she ever think that she could buy? And I left being like, oh, Jasmine said I could buy a house. Okay. I should have probably bought a house a year ago. Yeah, I should have probably bought it. And I love to say, I, I love that you brought that up because one of the biggest hurdles I feel like with people in, in the barrier besides affordability on, on home ownership, really is fear. Yeah. It's fear of the unknown. It is fear of being judged. Yeah. It's fear of the whole process and what do you what do you do to to fight against fear you educate yeah right you get the information and then you're informed you can't be fearful of something you know has been disproven and it's not a judging process it's either not right now or Mm -hmm. let's get let's get going right so it's one or the other but i feel like a lot of people feel that fear and they're like they internalize it and they just go i'm just gonna wait yeah but George and I did some math on the cost of waiting, and the money you leave on the table is, especially in an appreciating market, is just insane. Astounding. It's yeah. astounding. We can get into the numbers in a bit if, any, if anyone's interested. Um, yeah. But generally, it has to begin with a conversation, a question. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, obviously, you guys are industry professionals, and you have been doing this for a while, um, but you also both own, personally, multiple properties. So you know what you're doing, you know what you're talking about, mm-hmm. and that's why my Myself and so many agents personally have used you guys. Um, even hello in our building, yes. 19 Madakisa Street at Boston Connect Real Estate. You know we do commercial. Lending. Yeah, you do commercial. Lending. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and you can close in 28 days. <laughs> Back then, in 2019, we could. Um, but yeah, so you know, I we obviously back you guys. You guys back us, and we and just you know we love you guys, and, and thank you for joining me on my show. Yeah, no, and this is, it, it's always so much fun to hear the perspectives too, and there's always some really good questions. And someone I, I said, you know, we're on the radio. It's like, are you going to talk about? the the home inspection process and I was like oh not no nah. I wasn't I was I'm not a home enough. inspector mm-hmm. and and I asked him I said what what is it what is it that you'd want me to Hello? talk about with that like I'm not I'm not about a home what? inspector a home inspector and I said isn't that the point where you negotiate ah uh, yeah and well, I thought that was interesting I mean, <laughs> yes uh, I think it depends on what your offer is if it's... that's the point that you're starting to negotiate but I do want to give the phone number to everybody listening Please. if you want to join in on the discussion or you have any questions for Jasmine or George 781-837-4900 is the number over at the studio we have our own George too George is in the studio ready for your call. I sure um, am. Yeah, and we are live on Facebook, so be sure to follow Boston Connect Real Estate. These two have 
have their laptops up in front of me, and I feel like I'm uh, missing, like, an accessory. You want my laptop? Because I can show we you all the share. numbers. No. We typically do share. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm sure you do. Um, but, yeah, we are live on Facebook, so if you are a little shy and don't want to call in, you can, um, you know, uh, join in another discussion on Facebook, too. So, um, okay, diving in. Yeah, so that I want to start with that. Um, and, and thank you, Cindy, for texting me that question. It's a really good one. Mm -hmm. Your offer, which is something that you work on with your, your real estate agent, mm -hmm. that is going to list out all of the terms of yeah. everything that's going to take place in your purchase. So during that offer time, that is going to have when you close, how much you give as some skin in the game, or yeah. as we call it, the earnest money deposits. It is going to say whether or not you're, you're giving yourself a home inspection period, some time to come back, and even what that inspection's for. So that home inspection, if you put for informational purposes only, that is different than just putting in a home inspection or putting in a home inspection for safety and soundness. Yeah. And so all of these different terms, this is this is the perfect question that you bring to a realtor. And mm -hmm. this is the importance of working with a really good buyer agent mm -hmm. because what you put in that offer, that is not the time. You know, if you're looking for a closing cost credit, if you need the seller to contribute to your closing cost, your offer is where that, that information needs to be yeah, present. 100%. You can't hope that something's wrong so that you can then negotiate it yeah. in. Um, yeah. And I think that's a really big contention, like that's a big point with agents. And some agents I know as a strategy do not ask until after the home inspection for a credit, even when they know the, sell the buyer needs it to buy. And yeah. so that is always a really tricky thing. And so I always, I always defer to the agent on that type, on that question. But I do like people to know that your offer, it all comes back to that piece of paper, those yeah. terms that you put together. So I just wanted to answer that one first. Did you have a direction you wanted this to go? Because I know I said we we're going to kind of wing it, and we got a No, I mean, I'm down to just wing it. I mean, you guys, you guys, do you do your own show? Or I feel like I always see you talking into a microphone. Yeah, I yeah. do the mortgage roundtable okay. on Thursdays. <laughs> okay, uh, so you know what you're house. doing. Yes. <laughs> we, we have a, a newly bustling YouTube channel yeah. as well. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, pretty, pretty yeah. out there on social media. Yeah, yeah. check out our four videos on YouTube. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Promote them. Who cares? Guys, guys you're going to make more, right? We are real people doing real things. So yeah. it's really, it's really interesting as the, the comp, you know, the world evolves and you're like, I'm a part-time marketing agent, you know, professional yeah. Yeah. and I'm a YouTube specialist. And it's funny because, um, the fact that it's come so popular to create content, um, just shows how hungry people are for this information and that there's really not any one good resource. Yeah. So I want to kind of spend a few minutes debunking some things I keep seeing on TikTok. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Well, I'm big into TikTok. So just debunk away. Okay. So the one thing I keep hearing is, did you know that you can still buy with a 3% interest rate? Okay. Well, let's, <laughs> let's talk about Where? this. Where? So <laughs> the, the, the time of the historical low interest rates is gone. Mm -hmm. And if we economically as a country do well in not messing up our entire government, it won't come back to twos and threes. Um, now, of course, they're it certainly could get messed up again, and we could make the same type of credit policies that cause those type of rates. But you have to remember, there was a global pandemic. Yeah. An epidemic, then a pandemic, a global shutdown. And so what happened was historical in nature as it began. And so we can't look back. We can't hold our breath for those 2 and 3% interest mm -hmm. rates. Now, will they come down? It's likely. But looking for that and thinking that time is, is coming back and waiting for that, that is, that is a huge mistake because it's just not a goal that you mm -hmm. can either measure, mm -hmm. work towards, or even anticipate. Yeah. And so what they're talking about is assumable mortgages. And all government, lo most government loans, I should say, there's a few caveats, some that are in modifications and whatnot, are assumable. Mm -hmm. They are built in from the, from the beginning to be assumed by someone else. So what that means is if you had a 30-year fixed mortgage at 3% interest and you're now on year two of 38 repaying this, someone could take over that loan, that payment, all the terms stay the same. So if you've got 28 years left, this new person has 28 years left and they can assume it. Now that's all good and well. That's actually factual. But, and here's the big but, if 
you if that seller who is selling that house with that assumable mortgage and is offering assumable mortgage owes three hundred thousand dollars on that mortgage and has twenty eight years left and is selling that house for five hundred thousand, that two hundred thousand dollar difference needs to be made up. Yeah. And one of the big caveats that comes down, especially on FHA, the second mortgage that you get for that two hundred thousand also has to be assumable. Mm-hmm. And you can't assume a mortgage, an FHA mortgage, and get a second FHA mortgage yeah. for the purchase. Yeah. So if you've got a huge windfall, if you are selling a property and, and buying another property, you're going to assume that FHA mortgage, that could work out for you. But you're assuming it with the mortgage insurance that's still coming mm-hmm. on. You're, you have to wait for the servicer, whoever's currently holding and servicing the mortgage, to approve you 45 to 90 days. I know someone right now in Florida who's been trying to assume a mortgage since April. Still okay. need to um, qualify. Yeah, still need a credit qualify. Mm-hmm. Um, but you need to come up with that difference. Yeah. And so a first-time home buyer with a 3.5% down payment on an FHA loan thinking, well, this is great, I can I can assume that and then make up the difference, that's not so cut and dry. Yeah. And then on VA as, uh, loans, which is the most widely known assumable, first of all, it doesn't have to go from a veteran to a veteran. A veteran can let a citizen assume their mortgage. However, their VA eligibility is tied up. Yeah. And so if a citizen... So they can't go and purchase something using a VA loan? Well, they might be able to if they have a little eligibility left for it, but they might have to, they might be required to make a down payment. Okay. And then the bigger thing there is the huge risk that comes with letting the assumability go to a citizen. Now, if it's another veteran, they're tying up their their Mm -hmm. eligibility, that's okay. It transfers over. Um, But if it's to a citizen, Mm -hmm. their eligibility is tied up. And if this citizen forecloses, the veteran is yeah. the one that's charged yeah. that, that eligibility. So does that happen often? Like It happens. It, it, used, it happened a lot. Uh. Uh, now, they haven't been assumable because rates have been so, yeah. low, so low. People are just getting their own mortgages. Yeah. It's yeah. only a big topic because interest rates are so high mm-hmm. in general that this conversation is coming up. So not only do you need to make up that difference, but you as a seller, unless you're selling to another veteran, you pose the risk and that veteran has to have the eligibility Mm -hmm. as well Mm -hmm. you pose the risk of someone tying up your eligibility and also forfeiting your eligibility if they foreclose Mm -hmm. so you take on a lot of risk for that it works great with family deals yeah so just a question on that if so in that scenario Mm -hmm. they go for um another va loan with the purchase but they have to put a down payment down what is the benefit of going through a va loan if they have to put money down well if they're selling and they're buying and now i don't know why you would assume and just not sell i mean maybe it was unity we see it in quite a bit where there's you know some areas just aren't selling at certain prices Mm -hmm. or whatever if it's a family deal. Otherwise, it, it doesn't make sense not to go to market and just sell it yeah. regular. Um, there's really no big benefit that I could see. But if you are yeah. selling and you've got the chunk of change, you're putting it down anyways. Yeah. And say you want to help your neighbor's kid buy and, and you know, you've know you got their parents are going to give the money. Mm-hmm. I've seen situations yeah. where it makes sense. There's, a, there's an element of trust there. Um, and the whole you know scenario works together. But you're, you're, you're getting that... 15 to 30 second you know clickbait and you're thinking that this is something that is easily attainable and that's one thing i wanted to debunk Mm -hmm. because i'm seeing i get asked this question four or five times a week and it's wow i i heard on tiktok i could get a three percent interest rate and it's not completely incorrect but there's an asterisk yeah to all these you have to qualify yeah you have to qualify and how you make up the difference yeah because that and just give an attorney's uh, answer of it depends. <laughs> yeah, it certainly does. It, does. it depends. It does. Um, but the bigger answer to that is if you got a ton of cash. Yeah. But I just <laughs> I do I, I see the benefit if you're assuming of say a veteran's well deserved benefit and mm-hmm. maybe a veteran to veteran right and you might entice mm-hmm. more buyers mm-hmm. hey you can assume the first part of this mortgage you need to get a second one mm-hmm. but I feel that risk that you mentioned Jasmine kind of outweighs the benefit yeah. for you as a potential yeah. seller. Yeah. Right? You're leaving the door open for some serious risk, and the pool of buyers are just there. Yeah. So it's kind of like... There's enough buyers. Yeah, that yeah. you're like, okay... Not but a problem maybe, we're having. But yes. maybe, <laughs> yeah, not a problem when I'm up against 30 other offers. Um, but maybe in certain areas where, um, and this is just... Tracy Grady actually brought this up on a show that I did with her. Um, so she's a full-time realtor here at Boston Connect Real Estate with her husband, Jim. They are the Grady team. 
Tracy does a lot of Saturday shows with me, but she had brought up that her daughter lives in Nashville and there is a ton of real estate mm. because they have a ton of new construction mm -hmm. and a lot of things are sitting and sitting and not a lot of people are buying resales because there's so many new construction developments and so much to buy. So maybe in the areas that like buyers do have sort of the privilege of having their pick of some multiple properties that they're not like that scenario wouldn't really like work for like they wouldn't really go for something like that yeah yeah absolutely and if it's a marketing um a marketing perspective i, I do understand it mm -hmm. um but it's just really unfortunate that a lot of mortgage professionals are presenting this information mm -hmm. to get more clicks mm -hmm. on their four videos on YouTube. Um, <laughs> hey, wait, don't, don't knock the four videos. You guys have four videos. Uh, really good four really, videos. Really, no, yeah. solid four videos. Solid four uh, videos. <laughs> but they're trying to get you in the door with yeah. a little bit of information. But if it's not helpful information, mm -hmm. you really have to pick and choose what you listen to nowadays. So, yeah. you're, 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 you know, you're with the Talk Real Estate Roundtable. It's a good source of information. Yeah. It's multiple we are a good points. source of information. It really is. And you've got <laughs> professionals who yeah. the, the affordability is absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. And it's why when we talk about this and we're looking at the rent versus own, and that's another thing. Um, I think it was, was it Realtor.com put something out saying that um, buying was better than, I'm sorry, that renting was better than buying now. What? Um, and they said, you know, we've done all the math out. Oh, you must have hated that. Oh, we did some math. Oh, you know we did wait. some I, math. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, listen, sidebar, every time I do have a conversation with you and you're running the numbers and you're mad and I'm just, I'll just sit there on the phone like, all right, she'll she'll tell me the number at the end. The I, don't need to I don't need to follow her through this journey. <laughs> right? I want everyone to know <laughs> every <laughs> number as I'm going. And she's like, oh, you know, this is really like, carry the one over. And I'm like, oh, just <laughs> I'll wait I'm gonna give her another minute and, then, and then it's okay and then yeah so this will be your payment and then I'm like okay and this is what you have to bring at closing okay yep I could do that <laughs> so you know what she's condensing into like a four second summary is every single closing cost yes yeah. oh, yeah. well, I, 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 I figure this out I think you can do this well you know, well, you know. and I'm like What's your okay. factor? All right. Yeah. I show okay. my work, guys. I show my work. Listen, I trust you enough to be like, sh she'll tell me the number. But <laughs> she'll tell me if I can do it or not. Here's what I say. As much as I love to be a trusted professional, and yeah. I really do, it means a lot. Um, I always say, no matter how much you trust me, verify. I want you to look at it. I, w I had one agent who's like, I don't care, just send it over. And I sent him over the worksheets. I was like, he's like, I have six minutes to put in this offer. Send me over everything. You, you yeah. know who I'm talking about. I said, send me over everything. I need the breakdowns right now. And I sent it to him within three minutes. And I did the mortgage insurance and correct And he goes, hey, I just took a quick look. The mortgage insurance looks too high. And I went, uh, oh, yep, that's the old FHA MIP. Yep. Um, I've had this client so long, I was in the wrong wow. file. So mm. the FHA mortgage mm. insurance premiums got cut by almost 30%. Wow. And I want you to question it. Yeah. I want you to look at the numbers, and I want you well, to understand Well, people have to know it. that they have to know what to ask. Yeah, but like even, <laughs> like, even saying, hey, yeah. the rate seems high. Let's mm. talk about what it is. Yeah. Let's talk about why it's that way. Because if you don't understand loan level pricing adjustments as a whole, if mm -hmm. you don't understand what makes an interest rate, if you don't understand um, what goes into your payment, yeah. it's really hard to control and yeah. manage. Yeah. And so... I tell people, you know, if it doesn't matter who you're pre-approved with, if you have, if you don't know your interest rate, even even your floating interest rate, if you don't know your range of interest rates, if you don't know how the rent interest rate, the interest rate, rent rate. <laughs> if you don't know how the rate impacts your payment at different numbers because it's always a moving target and if you don't know how that and the purchase price work together mm -hmm. and how it impacts the closing costs you're in the wrong direction yeah you need to ask those questions and you need to be given the answer and not brushed off yeah and and not told you you'll see a loan estimate whenever you need to you need to ask these questions because now more than ever it has become increasingly more important to have the right team together mm -hmm. and to fully understand where every penny is going yeah. it's it's vitally important mm -hmm. so that was one of the things i wanted to debunk the the three percent interest yeah um I don't, I don't think you can get to that point where you've been talking about points or what have you until mm -hmm. you start with the the basics and the fundamentals yeah here's your down payment here are closing costs here are the deposits and hear how they're different than the down payment yeah. right yeah. it's really getting back to the the basic level but even getting down to the actual monthly mortgage payment, talking, I mean, we've seen 
seen a lot of different things coming from different people. Yeah. And if, if information was the key, right, we'd all have six packs, right? right. But it's not the information. It's, it's application and talking to the right people, right? So we doing see a work. lot. Of, yeah, doing the work. And we, we see a lot of things. Things like taxes, right? So you look, oh, I, someone told me this and it costs this much. Yeah. And just even a simple input, you know, what you put in is what you get out. It's like, well, the taxes on this property that's 600 grand aren't $2,000 a year, right? Yeah. So it's like, yeah. It's, yeah. but they wouldn't understand that if they don't know the fundamentals and the building block behind the mortgage. Mm -hmm. and I think that's where we try to like, okay, two steps back. Let's start from the beginning. Yeah. Well, let, let's start. From, I know you want to debunk things, but yeah. let's start from the beginning. So like... For the most part, like, and I know you can't get into specifics and I don't want you to, but, mm -hmm. you know, people approach you, they want to see if they qualify or they, you know, where they are. Mm -hmm. I'll use myself as an example because I'm pretty open about that. Like, yep. I came to you and I was like, just let me know if I'm on the right path. Like, let me know if my journey is has started. And sure. you're like, you're already at the end of the path. You're like in the ocean. You're like, <laughs> you need a boat yes. type of thing. But like, so how is the beginning process for you guys? Like, what, are, what expectations do you set for? For clients that come to you so I think George and I work a little differently um, which makes us a great team I'll just say mine you can say what you do but I always like to start with a phone call conversation mm -hmm. as much as email is effective and everything can be done online I like to know who you are mm -hmm. what your goals are yeah what your comfort level is and what your current savings level is monthly <laughs> and I'm I, sorry my yeah. mind automatically went to like uh, like dating like I feel like I would pick up the phone and be like what what are your goals in life what do you th exactly. like that would be my dating question exactly what are you I'm looking for, fun? for red how much do you have in savings <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for I'm all looking for the, the red, red flags, flags. So you, you want to like start to date like you're like a little online dating for yeah. you like and, when you're starting and out. it's true and, yeah. and, to, and also to make sure that I'm a good fit yeah and there are certain programs that we just don't do um and I just don't believe are um, I don't believe that they're actually beneficial mm -hmm. I've looked at the foreclosure mm -hmm. rates on them I don't believe they're beneficial yeah we don't offer them and sometimes that is the best program for somebody and I will direct them yeah. somewhere mm -hmm. else mm -hmm. if they're not so there is a little bit of there is a little yeah. bit of dating there yeah. um, and I've got to say that happens with maybe one percent of people it's not mm -hmm. often mm -hmm. um, but there is a little bit of that I want to make sure that it's the right speed like my speed is super analytical I go deep. I'm look. I'm talking to you about every number. I'm mm -hmm. talking about how things mm -hmm. are built. Mm -hmm. um, George is a little bit bubblier, um, and <laughs> as he's sitting there smiling, like, yeah, dude. You know, and he also, he, you know, he's gonna relate to you on this because the dog. And it even comes down to that. Like, how are we gonna work together? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like, how are we gonna be a team? Because we're really gonna be talking together for. A while if mm. you don't find the right home, if you don't get your offer accepted, you know, it could be years. If we're working yeah. on credit for the next four months yeah. to get you in a position, yeah. are you changing lanes in your career? Right. And so we like to kind of get the, the baseline and figure out, do you have the, the building blocks in place to, to buy? That's mm -hmm. the first thing. I'm going to look at your credit. Do you have, it's not just the score. Do you have a thin profile, a thick profile? You know, do you have a history of good repayment? Do you have a history of bad repayment? Yeah. Do you have old things that are that are new? Um, how do you look on paper for credit? I'm going to look at your income. I'm going to be looking at your past history. Is college part of your two-year history? Do I have those documents? You know, yeah. are you salary? Are you hourly? You know, things like that. Yeah. I'm going to look at how much you have saved. Are you getting a gift? Are you looking for a down payment assistance? I'm going to look at those kind of components. Those are just the basic loan officer level stuff yeah i'm going to be able to do use that information to create a budget see what programs qualify but then there's the bigger thing probably the more important thing that we do and that is prepping people and seeing how ready they are to actually own a home and a lot of this just comes down to education so we're going to be talking about all of the components of home ownership mm -hmm. it's not just you are buying this is how much you owe this is the loan here you go yeah let's talk about you're buying new construction and did you know that you should probably have a dehumidifier in the basement because the concrete is seeping moisture mm -hmm. and for the first several months you're going to have a humid or wet basement do you do you understand that your utility bills um, when you have a solar are going to be different than if you don't have a solar mm -hmm. do you know the difference between a solar lease do you know the difference between yeah. a purchase agreement do you understand what the tax and water and well and all those charges are in the town 
because the mortgage payment is only part of it. Yeah. Mm. It's only part of it. Yeah. All the other things, like people want these crazy things like electricity and food. Yeah. Wow. It's wild. It's wild. And they yeah. don't. Heat. Yeah. Heat. <laughs> what? And even. And you can't just set the house on fire. No. You gotta, you gotta no. heat it some other way. I would like to officially state here <laughs> no. that you cannot just set your house on fire for Please heat. Please don't. <laughs> um, even the difference between flood, like we were just talking to Amy Milligan from CRV Insurance and she blew our minds. Did you know that um, if you have an above ground pool, and it lets go, your home insurance doesn't cover that. You will have needed flood insurance. Oh, wow. And a lot of people don't. That just blew my mind. Just, right? Yeah. We, it, it's cheap as well. Like, I mean, yeah. $500 if you're, if you're nope, not in a not flood Not quoting zone. insurance I'm not quoting here. insurance. But, but <laughs> ballpark, a lot less expensive than you think it would yeah. for the amount of coverage. Right. Yeah. And so kind of get it, gauging this stuff, and some people will take it, and they're just going, oh, that's really good information. This is, yeah, I'm totally ready. Like, And, and other people will be like, I think I need to save more. Yeah. Like, I think I need to make sure I have a bigger safety net. And I'm not going to judge you. If the loan program is telling you you need absolutely nothing in your checking account at closing um, and you're okay with that, I'm not going to tell you you cannot buy. But what I'm going to advise is come day one, you've moved in. This house is now yours. The oil tank, let's, let's go. You need an oil tank. What are we doing? Yeah. And I'm making sure that during the home buying process, you got a plan. Okay, yeah, now I'm very nervous. Don't be nervous. <laughs> be informed. No, yeah, it, it's so true. I mean, I've been, what, on my home journey for a year now? Like, mm -hmm. pretty much exactly a year. Yeah. And it, I know, I think about it every single time I put in an offer. I'm like, okay, this is just my payment. I can do that. But, like, what, what happens? And I say this all the time on the show. Like, it's not just about the payment. It's like the day after closing, like, I'm by myself. It's, it's up to me to pay the electric bill yes. to, to buy oil for the tank to uh, you know do something if it breaks like it's up to me and if I can't budget that then I should like shouldn't be purchasing a house in that range and your your rate of savings is one of the factors that I knew you were ready mm -hmm. because you with your with your current rent plus your rate of savings mm -hmm. were exceeding your mortgage payment yeah which means you'll be able to continue saving yeah. and building up that nest after. Yeah. So it's that's that's mine. I always like to start with with the phone call because I can send you the link, you can fill out the link, and in your information, you can send me 10 documents, and we can have this wrapped up in an hour. But I want to kind of figure out where mm -hmm. your education needs to start. Mm -hmm. Does yes. it start at the very building, yeah. you know, the building blocks, or do you own 15 properties and you like... I, I need to give you like the high level yeah. type of type of education, <laughs> George. What George, about you? yeah, George. You know, I want you to be always, able to say. We always say that you know we're more than an interest rate, and I think Jasmine goes back to the point of like it's a deeper dive, and yeah, yeah. And you know, folks always just in real estate in general, they're like, well, first step of buying a home is you need to get pre-approved. Yeah. And I think the first step of buying a home is doing what you did, is yeah. reaching out and having a conversation, listening to shows like this. For me, I even. <laughs> It was after I purchased my first home was listening to a ton of podcasts just yeah. about real estate. Yeah. I mean, the information gathering stage, I think, is crucial. Yeah. And we're happy to provide that information. <laughs> and there's some good stuff on our YouTube channels. But that, that conversation, um, and as you guys mentioned in the show intro, that holistic approach, because mm -hmm. uh, we want to know... You know, we get those 10 documents on an online application, and, oh, they're making a bunch of money, they've got the savings, and everything's there but they're really pushing on what they can qualify for. Yeah. But we don't see the whole rest of their picture. Yeah. We want to they're know planning on quitting their job tomorrow. Yeah, They're planning on, you know, whatever. Yeah. Who else is in their world that's going to be a part of their home? Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's, we take a holistic approach. And it, like you mentioned, if it's not now, it's okay. What are the steps we need to go through? What's the game plan to get mm -hmm. you there? Because yeah. we believe that, you know, home ownership's not for everyone, but it should be attainable. You should have a path. And yeah. You should be informed. Yeah. I also think that it's super important to know, like, why do you want to purchase your home? Like, what's your intent mm. for this home? It so, always like, comes down to why. Yeah, why? So, like, me, yes, I'm a first-time home buyer. I'm not looking for my forever home. Like, I'm looking really to start somewhere, right. you know, and, you know, gain some equity there, put some work into it, and sort of reevaluate my life in a couple of years. But, yeah. like, that's my, like, I'm not... 
you know, yes, I'm 32. I'm always honest about that. <laughs> 32, not married. Like, I don't have another person being like, oh, let's, you know, buy this house and start our family and do all these things. Like, that's not on my radar right now. Like, right. I'm focused on myself and how I can, you know, move forward by myself. And there are some people that are like, oh, I want the big house. I want the big yard. I want this, you know, in a nice neighborhood or whatever their their requirements are. But, you know, I think that the why is also sort of a factor in why people it's go to one you. Of the, it's one of the biggest factors that we look at when we're talking to people because your why is also kind of your how, you know? Like, yeah. for, for you, you might have some house hacking ideas. Like, yeah. like a property you looked at recently had a chicken coop. Like, we're yeah. selling eggs, man. We're like selling we've, eggs. We've, Anyone, <laughs> I'll, I'll rent out my chicken coop to anybody who has chickens. Exactly. You know, having the strategy around it. Yeah. And also, the re, like, like, I've got a couple people that come to mind when I think about the importance of why. And I could literally cry mm -hmm. thinking about them and their journey and their goals. Yeah. And one person, Tracy, told me I could shut her out anytime. Um, she's one of my very, 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 very favorite clients mm -hmm. who started off in the lowest of the low position and never, ever thought she could, yeah. she could buy. It yeah. took several years of credit repair, several, several years of counseling, several years of savings plans, talking three, four times a week. Mm -hmm. um, and she bought the first home and she just closed on her home equity line mm -hmm. and she took a $100,000 home equity line to buy her first investment property. Yeah, that's awesome. From a point she never thought yeah. she'd own a house yeah. for her kids. Yeah. And now she's trying to buy an investment property for her teenage kids mm -hmm. so that they have a place to go to. And it is literally why we do this. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things where if you don't have this dial down as someone who's considering real estate, if you haven't written it down, you, you have no guidance yet. Yeah. I heard a bell, so I don't know. That. 10 minutes. That's a 10 minute mark. We only have 10 minutes left. <laughs> oh my gosh, it always Wild. flies by. I know. I know. So we talked about the why. Yeah, we talked about the why. Debunked. We talked about start off. Mm -hmm. um, George, can we spend just three minutes? On the cost of waiting. Oof. Can we talk yeah. about I know charts. you were excited about that. Yeah. The buy cost versus waiting. the buy versus sell, whichever you prefer. Yeah, it, and I, I mean, think buy versus all. The rent. <laughs> what is those? it? One of those. One of those. <laughs> I feel like that's always the the back of just high level, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, my rent. I could be paying a mortgage, right? You've, how many times have you heard that? Yeah, oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And then people say, Oh, come on, dummy, don't rent, buy. Look at what you're missing out <laughs> on, right? But it's got to make sense. And there are some financials, there are some economics behind it. Um, and in the market that we're in particularly, in a higher price point market. In a higher interest rate market. Mm -hmm. A higher interest rate mm -hmm. market. Particularly a higher interest rate market because we were at a particular spot where buying and owning was getting close to being cheaper than renting. Mm -hmm. But typically in a higher price point area a desirable place to live talking about new construction where mm -hmm. you build around here yeah it's typically more expensive to own and purchase and have a mortgage than it is to rent on a monthly cash flow yeah perspective yeah and that's but key cash flow, flow cash flow month, yes which is however but you're missing out on the loan pay down the amortization the loan the value growth, building equity, equity. Mm -hmm. yep but it does require cash flow and the reason we looked at this, just take Weymouth, for example. Mm -hmm. Average sale price right now is 560000 in Weymouth. Yeah. In 2020, when it was already heightened, I didn't use 2019 because I felt that was cheating. It was $463,000. Yeah. So it has gone up $100,000 year over mm -hmm. year. What percentage is that $93,000? Is mm -hmm. it almost 20%? Mm -hmm. You know, 20 mm -hmm. 23% um, from four years ago, right? Now, even in a higher interest rate environment, right, you don't lose that equity. Yeah. You're just paying higher on the principal. So everyone that I keep talking to, I'm going to wait for rates to go lower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if everybody is waiting for rates to get lower and the people who are currently shopping who are not waiting for rates to get lower, they are just shopping. Yeah. If there's already so much competition yeah, with think about higher the competi rates. Yeah. Think about the the forty offers, forty five offers we were getting when the interest rate was even at four. Like, so that's what, when we saw that number, we said, okay, if they're saying it's better to rent than buy, let's let's look at the cash flow because right, if you're gonna if you're gonna buy and immediately sell, probably doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Like one year, two years, but if you're gonna buy and you're gonna hold on to it. 
George, do some math out for us. I mean, we did a couple scenarios. One was just buying and renting and doing the same thing. I'm going to buy, sit there for 15 years, or rent and stay there for 15 years. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some inputs in terms of a slight rent increase over 3%, amortization going up, um, and, you know, maintenance and repairs and taxes. So for buying for five hundred and sixty three thousand yep. one sixty seven, which is the exact average. <laughs> there, yeah, we, we need to look down right to the point. Yeah. Now the overall cash flow difference, meaning the cost of ownership yeah. on a monthly basis, what am yeah. I out of pocket? Yeah. It's more expensive to own the home by forty five thousand dollars roughly, right? Mm -hmm. But what are you missing out on? The appreciation gain. Right? So the net gain of overall owning the home, you're missing out on almost six hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, five hundred and eighty three thousand mm -hmm. dollars because you own the home, right? Yeah. So it's like, yes, it is costing me money and 45, let's call it $46,000 over 15 years. Yeah. It's not a huge sum of money yeah. more out of pocket, but in the next 15 years, what's more of an investment? Yeah, I know. Because after the 15 years, you go to sell it and what, you're using that to purchase something else right. or you maybe principal you don't want to purchase it. Yeah, maybe you don't want to purchase something and then you can rent, but you have that sort of money that you made And you off have of the your piggy bank. Too. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing is I have a lot of clients who, right, or we have a lot of clients who, um, yes, they they might have purchased for more than they wanted to during the craze, um, and other people who have purchased before that who now have a safety net. Yeah. Who now have something to sell and restart if they need to. Yeah. And while it really has to make sense, they might make a lateral a lateral move, maybe on the next house they just put down 10%. Mm -hmm. Even though they have 40%, mm -hmm. and they use that 30% that to subsidize their payment. Yeah. That amortization, you know, in the pay, the principal loan reduction, because as you're, you're paying, you're paying that rent every month. It's going to someone else's mortgage. It's going yeah. to someone else's yeah. pocket, and yeah. it doesn't get you at anything. So in 15 years, you, you know, it, <laughs> with standard appreciation, of what is the appreciation on that? Of uh, uh, Just over 4%. 4%, which is average. But we had this conversation earlier when we were having lunch. It's like, yeah, you're paying rent every month, but then when you go to leave where you're renting to rent somewhere else, think about the cost that you need to even get into mm. a place. So we were talking about that. This doesn't include, and in this, our, our $45,000 more in cash flow does not include first, first, last, and security. That just yeah. assumes you stay in the same place. But yeah. if you move, if first, you move. last, security, buyer fee, yeah. if you're at four months of that at $4,000, that's $16,000 off that $45,000 yeah. mark. And now we're talking about less than $30,000 on a cash flow perspective to get 526000 a total net gain of almost $583,000 yeah. over 15 years. And of course, it's a long time period but we did the math shorter we we did the math for 10 years and five years and all of them range from seventy four thousand mm -hmm. dollars in appreciation mm -hmm. um all the way up to the 583 number yeah. in 15 years so if you don't nothing ventured nothing gained right mm -hmm. um and it doesn't even talk about the fact that you can have chickens and yeah, you can have you dogs can the <laughs> peace of mind the stability and we peace of mind you know there's no control yeah right i mean that's really the up. Well, I've I've always said to you, Jasmine, that like, yeah, I'm I want to get into something myself. Um, you know, I'm really only looking for like a two bedroom, three bedroom is would be ideal, but mm -hmm. you know, they're so few and far between. But like I always say to you, if for some reason I needed to get a roommate, like I need the space, the opportunity to in the house. So like that, that would be like my only like sort of specific thing that I'm looking for mm -hmm. when it comes to a house is like, could two people live in this house? An exit strategy. And a lot yeah. of people are doing that together. A lot of families are buying together right now. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of people are building townhouses with yeah. multiple families in it. So there's yeah. a lot of strategies around yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And not necessarily like an exit like I need to sell, it's the backup plan. Yeah, yeah, so. always need a backup plan. We only have about like two-ish minutes left, so I want to give you guys an opportunity to give your contact information out and then we'll do final thoughts. So okay. you Beautiful. guys can fight. Over. So we are... <laughs> got the contact down, kick it off. It all goes the same place. That means it funnels on home. Yes, we are Jasmine Glasgow and George Post from Maritime Mortgage. You can find us online at MaritimeMortgage.com. We're on Facebook. We're on um, Instagram. We're on YouTube. Um, you yeah, can YouTube. <laughs> yeah, Woo. YouTube. Uh, you can also email us. It's team, T E A M, at maritimeloan.com. That's maritime like the ocean, loan like a mortgage.com. <laughs> and that goes to our whole team. Um, George, George, myself, or someone from our team will answer. You, 
work with all of us. It's the same thing. Or you yeah. can call George on his cell at 781-534-8071. And again. That, that was my radio voice. Yeah, yeah. another one. No, 781-534-8071. You can call me on my cell, but call him first at 774-240-4667 <laughs> because I talk too fast. Um, okay, one more time. Give your phone number one more time. 774-240-4667 or again, team at maritimeloan.com yeah like i said i uh, i cc your team on everything that i send out i will call you sitting in a kitchen somewhere and say hey can i afford this house <laughs> like i'm that person um call. but you know what you guys are honestly the best of the best and we wouldn't use you personally if we didn't think that so um thank you guys so much for joining me tonight and i know you guys left for a little while you were here for lunch and then you came back but yeah we i really went, appreciate we, it we just had a tour the south shore oh yeah where we live and work oh yeah we <laughs> live work snacks, you know. yeah, had some snacks oh i love that um but yeah you can listen to any of our past shows at talkrealestateroundtable.com again we are boston connect real estate you are listening to talk real estate roundtable if you also want to listen to any of our past shows you can go to your podcast app talk real estate roundtable you can go to bostonconnect.com for all of our contact information thank you guys so much i really Thanks appreciate for having us. Us. Yeah. Thank you for having us yeah you can join me every week we will be here. <laughs>